Hi, I'm Isabel Montanez, a paleoclimatologist and sedimentary geochemist and one of the PIs on the CO2 PIP project. So thank you for joining us in one of our January mini workshops that introduces CO2 PIP or the CO2 proxy integration project. Now this project builds on an earlier phase of CO2 PIP that focused on refining the Cenozoic CO2 record and some of you were involved in that project. In this next phase of CO2 PIP, we're extending our efforts back into the Mesozoic and the Paleozoic with an ultimate goal of building the next generation of Anerozoic CO2 record and standardizing approaches to paleo CO2 reconstruction. We wanna emphasize that, that we're gonna accomplish this as a collaborative scientific community. And we will target key needs for minimizing the existing limitations of reconstructing paleo CO2. We'll develop the data and modeling tools needed to advance the science. This research and the associated components are funded by the Frontier Research in Earth Sciences Program, or FRES, at NSF. So let me introduce the PIs of Phanerozoic CO2 PIP. There are eight PIs on the project. Dan Breaker from the University of Texas at Austin and Dana Royer from Wesleyan University and I will be coordinating the terrestrial proxy component. We'll be working with Kate Huntington from the University of Washington to apply clumped isotope paleothermometry to existing paleopedogenic carbonate samples from you, the participants. Barbara Honish from Columbia University and Lamont Doherty um, will be uh, coordinating the marine proxy component as well as overseeing the digital infrastructure component of the project. Gabe Bowen from the University of Utah will oversee the forward proxy modeling and the proxy model inversion analysis of the CO2 records. And Lydia Chilton and Steve Feiner, computer scientists from Columbia University, will be overseeing the outreach component that will include integrating science communication tools into the project and developing 2D web-based and 3D virtual reality tools. And throughout the project, please feel free to reach out to me or to Barbel Honish with any questions, concerns, or suggestions that you may have. As I mentioned, this project builds on a research coordination network that has documented, evaluated, and where necessary and feasible, revised the proxy-based CO2 estimates for the Cenozoic. So the plot that you're looking at here is from the Paleo CO2 website, and it presents one of the outcomes of that previous or RCN effort. That is, it's a full suite of quantitative CO2 estimates for the Cenozoic that were vetted by a team of paleo CO2 experts, including some of you. This Cenozoic based effort was funded by NSF and the Heising Simons Foundation. Now here you're looking at a compilation of all the published Phanerozoic CO2 estimates from all available proxies. As part of the Cenozoic CO2 effort, the RCN participants developed criteria for assessing which estimates are considered quantitative, semi-quantitative, or need to be temporarily quarantined, given that they're considered unreliable in their current form. These criteria consider whether they are analytical, there are analytical concerns, if the estimates are under constrained with regard to modern proxy theory, and or whether this proxy is independent of other CO2 estimates. So on this plot, the data shown in colored symbols are considered quantitative and reliable in their currently available form. For the pre-Cenozoic, the bulk of the published data are shown here, as you can see, as gray data points. And these are considered either semi-quantitative or in some cases unreliable in their current form based on the newly established screening criteria. And these data are the main target of the new CO2 PIP project. That is, these are the CO2 estimates that we aspire to modernize by working collaboratively with you. So we're taking a, a three-step approach to building the next generation of anaerozoic CO2 curve. First, we'll modernize existing CO2 estimates with a focus on terrestrial proxies. That is the paleosol carbonate and fossil leaf gas exchange based records. This will involve documenting each proxy record 
with all available data and metadata. And records that are um, currently incompletely parametrized will benefit from new analytical measurements and will thereby ensure that we have consistent data sets for as many records as possible. And these measurements will include C13 of occluded organic matter in pedogenic carbonates and, and also of fossil cuticles, clumped isotope thermometry of pedogenic carbonates, as well as additional measurements of stomatal morphologies. We'll be working with a team of postdocs who can carry out these measurements in our laboratories, or participants can choose to make these measurements in their own laboratories using community agreed upon approaches. And we have some available funds for new analyses to be done in your labs. Um, but we also have uh, graduate student in residence visits to the PI labs to get involved in making these new analyses. Dan Breaker addresses this in more detail in video three, proxy records and database development. And the primary goals of this component are to modernize existing CO2 estimates wherever uh, possible, and to continue to build the standardized paleo CO2 proxy data repository that includes all metadata and updated chronology and meets the FAIR findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable data standards. The second component is to develop a suite of forward proxy system models that provide a quantified representation of the proxy sensitivities to the environmental and ecophysiological conditions and processes that govern the CO2 signals. This will be done for a series of most commonly used proxies, including the pedogenic carbonates and the plant fossil-based proxies. This first-of-its-kind model development for CO2 proxies should advance our understanding of proxy sensitivities to individual controls that affect the accuracy and the precision of these CO2 estimates. We hope leading to more accurately defined uncertainties of the CO2 estimates. We will use inversion analysis to statistically integrate the model outcomes with the vetted and modernized proxy data to produce CO2 reconstructions for individual records and ultimately to build the next generation Phanerozoic compilation. This integrated model proxy strategy is addressed by Gabe Bowen in video number two. The new CO2 estimates for individual records along with any new measurement based data will be returned to the participants for them to publish, we hope in a timely manner, an updated record in the context of their own research. And those data will then be included in the uh, Phanerozoic compilation. So the third component is to advance the digital infrastructure for presenting and archiving the CO2 compilation, all of the metadata, and the project outputs as already initialized in the first phase of CO2 PIP. It's a high priority for us that the database and CO2 reconstruction and all associated products are fully accessible to the scientific community and to the general public. So we're gonna expand the existing Paleo CO2 website to include a Phanerozoic CO2 portal, shown here as kind of a landing page for that portal that will include a place to sign up to participate in the project, register for three in-person workshops, download the NSF proposal and other project documents, apply for small pots of analyses funds or for the graduate student in-residence visits to the PIA labs, and a forum for interactive discussions and access to all documents related to the outreach activities. Bearable Honish will be overseeing this component, working with the PIs and a data scientist and a computer engineer. And starting today, we seek input from you, the participants, on all the details of this website uh, and its components. And we will ask you to visit it uh, and give us that feedback. So all the participants will be involved in completing and co-authoring the Paleo CO2 Proxy Data Bit Repository. And there'll be three in-person workshops. Um, we're planning one for this year in June, 2022, and then uh, a second and third in years two and four 
as well as biannual virtual workshops in order to continue discussions, to obtain your feedback, and to ensure that anyone who's interested and wants to be kept up to, to date with the research activities and opportunities uh, to participate can know of those. As previously mentioned, we have dedicated funds for your graduate students as partners in the project to conduct short-term two to six week visits or in-residence visits at the PI laboratories. And the idea here is that these visits will allow your students to develop and ex or expand on projects involving paleo CO2 proxy and or modeling work and to provide training and collaboration opportunities. And there'll be opportunities to be involved in ed outreach and educational components. We'll be collaborating with the Science Education Resource Center, or CERC, at Carleton College to develop and test a suite of CO2-related teaching modules for both undergraduate and graduate students in earth and environmental sciences. This will involve a series of laboratory, in-class, and outside class exercises that promote interactive use of our Paleo CO2 database, the time series plots of the atmospheric CO2, and the inverse and forward proxy model algorithms. Dana Royer, uh, Dan Breaker, and Gabe Bowen will be coordinating this component. And Dana speaks to this plan in more detail in video number four, Outreach and Curriculum Development. Lydia Chilton and Steve Feiner will be spearheading the development of a series of outreach efforts, including tutorial workshops to discuss and create effective science communication products, and to develop 2D web-based and 3D virtual reality and augmented reality tools that permit users to experience the CO2-related climate connections to themselves and to their communities. So we wanna stress that this CO2 PIP project is designed to bring together the Paleo CO2 community to archive data and develop resources, including the next generation Phanerozoic CO2 record. Importantly, these tools are gonna to be built by and for the community. We anticipate several resources or products, a standardized FAIR data and metadata repository of Paleo CO2 estimates, with data descriptors for tracking changes through time. And these will be presented as a community co-authored publication in a data-oriented journal. A suite of software for use of for the Ford proxy system models with data integration and analysis algorithms that will be fully accessible through the CO2 PIT portal on the Paleo CO2 website. Individual modernized CO2 reconstructions will be made, made available to the participants for them to publish them. Collectively, these records that encompass expanded intervals of geologic time and the complete Phanerozoic CO2 compilation and the associated climatological implication will be published as community co-authored papers. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video and the other videos as in part of this series. And we hope that this will um, give you plenty to uh, think about and ask questions and have discussions in our workshops later on in the week and next week. Thank you.